Tell me if this sounds familiar. You just watched about 10 videos in a row about the Mark 18. It allows me to get kind of a better handful of it as we know. And you're stuck sitting there looking at your 16 inch AR build in complete and utter disgust. How are you supposed to fit through a doorway with that thing? 16 inches, are you kidding me? Anyways, anything past five inches is just a waste. Fast forward two months and you have traded in your 16 inch upper for a Chad quad rail Mark 18 build. Now it's range day and you and the boys go out to run some drills, but much to your surprise, the range that you've trained at routinely for two years straight doesn't actually have any CQB or room clearing elements. As your friends are shooting out to 300, 400, 500, 600 yards, you're sitting there with a 10.5 feeling slightly embarrassed. Even though your quad rail has their M-lock rails beat in terms of girth, it is a fact that everyone knows that girth just does not make up for length. Two more months have gone by. You have now built a 20 inch SPR upper. Being able to achieve the maximum velocity of 5.56 is now your primary personality trait. And now the only movie you watch is American Sniper. You get out of your car at the range, you walk up to your friends, surprise, we're doing speed drills today. While you're fumbling with your optic and not understanding the concept of height over bore, you struggle to land six shots into the A zone. Range day three, Revenge of the Sith. Hello there. You have now gone all the way back to a 16 inch upper. You have a red dot with a magnifier. You have a bipod. You have an IR laser. You have a foregrip. You have a suppressor. You have backup irons and you're rocking the surefire 60 round mags because the best cure to being trash at reloads is just simply to never have to reload. You have built what is on paper the best, perfect, and most technically sound AR-15 in the world. But as the range day goes on, you look down and you slowly start to realize that what was supposed to be a modern marvel of engineering, in your hubris, you've accidentally created the Titanic. And brother, this range day, this is your iceberg. The perfect rifle. Wait, who does that? I don't have the hair to pull that off. The perfect rifle. It seems like something that you can never really quite get right, doesn't it? You put all this effort into researching, buying attachments, and just building your dream rifle, but it somehow always seems to be one piece away from turning into a monstrosity that would wind up perfectly at home on the Plebeian AR subreddit. The dream of a perfect rifle can get out of hand pretty quickly. One bear. I'm just saying, I don't Versus think I could- a bear? Beat him fair. Are you trying to rhyme? Are you being cute right now? Just turn around, just take them in a headlock, boom. Rear naked choke, done. But lucky for you, I'm a nerd and I built out a system with data and science. Cold, hard data. Why am I moving my hand like this? I, I don't really know. To determine what build would work best for you and the things you actually need it to do. All right, so the first step to be able to do any of this is you need to sit down and take an honest look at what are your needs, your qualifiers, what are the scenarios that you need and want a rifle for? I need a weapon. A lot of times we tend to build rifles out to work for a hypothetical zombie apocalypse, SHTF, Russian invasion, sniper school, CQB fantasy, when in reality, they just don't really need most of that and you're gonna end up building a rifle that is just a pain in the butt to use and it's just simply not enjoyable. When looking at your needs, prioritize the things and scenarios that are important to you right now and then pick some hypotheticals to support that. So here's what I came up for for myself in terms of categories that are important and situations that I would need a rifle for. Ammo cost, ease of use, durability slash longevity of the parts of the rifle, then training, competitions, hunting, CQB slash home defense, mostly home defense, long range shooting, concealability slash ease of transport, and then at the bottom is SHTF. Now to make this work for yourself, I would highly encourage that whatever your situations are or your categories that you end up picking out, I would really encourage you to include ammo cost, ease of use, and durability and longevity as your first three. The reason is those categories are arguably the most important. All right, so next step, we are gonna use this graphing service. So the link to this is in this video. I just found this. It's a great tool to make radial graphs, nerd stuff, you know. You probably don't, you're cooler than me. All right, and the very first thing you're gonna do is all of the categories that you came up with for yourself, you are going to enter them up here at the top as columns. So the way you do that is you just hit this add column and then you are gonna enter all of these categories out. 
All right, now step two is actually the fun part. You get to build a bunch of hypothetical rifles or put down rifles that you already own. For instance, this very first one I have as my Sig Rattler build. So that's the original Sig Rattler with a five and a half inch barrel. All right, so we're gonna use the Sig Rattler as an example of how I would score things. So everything is gonna be one through 10. That makes it easy. It's easy for my brain to work uh, one through 10 because I'm retarded. With all of these categories, uh, 10 out of 10 is perfect. A one out of 10 is that it just doesn't work for you and is complete, utter garbage. No. This, I don't like this rifle. I mean, that's, this is going to be the loser in the comparison of the three MCXs and the one AR, without a doubt. Nothing is really ever truly middle of the road, so let's just steer away from fives. So 22 would be a 10 out of 10 in terms of ammo cost. You can literally buy buckets of it for not a lot of money. Nine out of 10, probably nine millimeter. It's more expensive than 22, but it's not bad. And so therefore 556, five, I'm gonna call an eight out of 10 because while it is not the cheapest round in the world, it is pretty easy to buy in bulk. Now we're scoring my Rattler. So 300 blackout, I'm gonna give that a solid six out of 10. So we're gonna enter a six into that category. There are definitely a lot more calibers that are much more expensive than 300 blackout. We're just gonna give it a six. Now, ease of use, what do I mean by this? Could I just hand this to one of my buddies or could I pick this up and very easily get the hang of this rifle? My Sig Rattler, the way I have it set up, yes. If you are familiar with how to work an AR-15, you will be able to jump over to the Rattler and use it very, very easily. It's not gonna be as easy as just a normal AR or a bolt action. We do have things to worry about like shooting suppressed, shooting unsuppressed, the correct gas setting to be on, and then also are you using supers or are you using subs? That can complicate things quite a bit. So for that reason, it's not going crazy high, but ease of use, I am going to give the Rattler a seven out of 10. Now, durability and longevity. I am actually gonna score the Rattler relatively high here. I'm not a SIG fanboy. I just do own a couple of their products and they're not my favorite products in the world. But I will say I have put a ton of rounds through the Rattler and it runs really, really well. The MCX platform has been very viable in terms of a short stroke gas piston system and running it suppressed, it runs cleaner, it runs better than direct impingement. Durability and longevity, I'm gonna give the Rattler an eight out of 10. All right, the training category. Can I easily train with the Rattler? Well, the answer is kind of. I'm feeling a six out of 10 for this one because while yes, I can show up to a range day with the boys, grab the Rattler, and I run most of the drills perfectly fine, the reality is it is a 300 blackout gun and not a 5.56. So that means I'm having to use a different caliber than all of my friends, and that does complicate things a little bit. Additionally, if we're doing any training exercises that go 200 yards or further, I can't really use the Rattler because that's not what it was meant for. Give me Taylor's gun. I'm sorry, give me my gun. What a slick way to get a reshoot. Sorry, I was using a five and a half inch barrel. Oh, no, 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 man. So for that reason, I'm gonna give the Rattler a six out of 10 when it comes to training. Now, what about using the Rattler for the competition world? Competitions and training, it's gonna be very similar situations, but the competitions that we're doing, a lot of the shooting is actually medium distance. So like 100 yards out to 400 yards. I would not want to use the Rattler at all for that. And again, I'm running into the issue that yes, there is a lot of up close shooting of steel and that's gonna, the Rattler is going to be more than adequate at that. I'd still be bringing a 300 blackout gun to a competition and that does just eat into my wallet a little bit more. And quite honestly, I'm gonna put it as slightly worse than average, it's getting a four. All right, hunting with the Sig Rattler. I've actually done this a lot. And the answer for this is you can absolutely hunt with 300 blackout. Your limiting factor with the Rattler is going to be the barrel length. The maximum range I could take down a white-tailed deer with the Sig Rattler is about 150 yards. So yes, you can hunt with the Rattler, but the last time I did go hunting with the Rattler, it jammed on me as I was about to take a shot. So we're gonna give the Rattler a six out of 10 when it comes to hunting, because it is slightly better than average, but it's not great. All right, now it is time for the Rattler to shine. CQB. 
The Rattler is getting a 10 out of 10 for CQB, and I'm not giving it a 10 out of 10 lightly. The ability to use subs and be super sneaky quiet, I would be able to respond to a home invasion with this gun because even with a suppressor on the end of a Rattler, it is still smaller than a Mark 18, and at the ranges you would be shooting for close engagements, 300 Blackout is actually going to deliver more force on target than 5.56 out of the same length barrel. All right, long range shooting. So I am not a good shooter. You should know that from this channel. And when I'm saying long range here, I mean anything from 300 to 600 yards because that's typically the furthest I'm able to shoot where I live. I am giving the Rattler a three out of 10 for long range. And the only reason I'm not scoring it lower is because pistols exist. Concealability and transport. This is a fun one. The Rattler with a suppressor is actually still capable of folding up and being a backpack gun. So the Rattler, I am going to give an eight out of 10 when it comes to concealability and transport. I think a nine or a 10 out of 10 would be a handgun. Now, this is everyone's favorite category to talk about forever. It's SHTF. Now, if the world ended, would I grab my SIG Rattler over anything else on this list? Well, you don't know what's on this list yet. My answer is no. I would grab the Rattler in addition to some other things, but if I had the choice of would this be my only rifle in the apocalypse, the answer is no. While I do really like it, it would be really capable, you could do some super sneaky stuff with it, it's not gonna be the only gun I would wanna have with me. So better than average, but I don't want it to be the only thing I have. I am gonna give it a six. Okay, so that whole process we went through with the Rattler, we're now gonna do that for a bunch of different builds. And I'm not gonna do that on camera. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna fill these out, and then we're gonna come back. Everybody missed this target at some point. All right, guys, so we're back. I entered all of the data for all of these rifles. And again, we're trying to be as subjective as we can with this. The rifles I entered are the Sig Rattler, uh, a Mark 18 build, a Ruger American, just to really, really show you what a specialized platform would look like, a special build that I'm calling the Dirty Harry, and then the Spear LT that I own. All right, so now that we have everything plotted in here, we are just going to go down here. We're gonna make sure everything is checked. I'm going to hit proceed. And then right here at the top, we are going to click generate chart. And look at this. So this is all a little bit overwhelming at first, but we can click this up here to separate the charts. And so these are each of our rifles separately, and then we can bring them back together. We can also click these colors to turn them all off. Let's look at the most generalized rifle I currently own, which is the Spear LT. You'll see that the Spear has scored pretty evenly across most categories, but it does the worst in CQB, home defense, as well as hunting. The obvious reasons for that are the one to 10 LPVO on there. While you certainly can do home defense with that optic, it's not gonna be as quick as an EOTech. And we scored low in hunting because yeah, it's a 16 inch 5.56 rifle. Of course, it's not gonna be the greatest hunting rifle of all time. Now let's compare the Spear LT against the Rattler because while the Spear LT wasn't perfect, by the data, this looks like a pretty generalized rifle. So let's turn on the Rattler, and you'll see that, yeah, the Rattler makes up for a lot of the weaknesses of the Spear LT, but the graph of the Rattler is actually a lot more specialized. So yeah, it's gonna be specialized in CQB and concealability and transport. Of course it is, it's the Rattler. Now, let's add in the Mark 18. Thought, thank God someone hit a tight group. And we do suck. Like, let's get that straight. We're not good at this. So because these colors are relatively similar, I'm going to turn off the Spear LT just for now. We can obviously see that the Mark 18 looks like a version of the Sig Rattler that while not as good at CQB and concealability, still performs very strongly in those categories, but is much more generalized in other categories. And that's a good thing. So now let's turn off the Rattler, let's compare that Mark 18 to the Spear LT that I own, and you'll see that yes, while the Mark 18 is beating out the Spear LT in terms of ease of use, training, and CQB, you'll see that the Spear LT across the board is generally a little bit more well-rounded. Because remember here, what I'm trying to do is not find a rifle that maxes out everything 10 out of 10. I'm trying to find something that's well-rounded in theory a GPR, general purpose rifle. Now, as an example of an SPR, let's compare the Spear LT to the Ruger American. 
Now, I know the Ruger American's not the traditional, like, YouTube SPR. What I mean by SPR right now is special purpose rifle in terms of, like, you own this to do one particular thing. So we're gonna turn on the Ruger American, and yeah, you immediately see. So the Ruger American, incredibly easy to use because at the end of the day, it is just simply a bolt action rifle, and it is hard to not know how to use a bolt action rifle. Mine is in 308, and as far as all these calibers on here, 308 scored four out of 10 because good hunting ammo in 308 tends to be at minimum a dollar per round. Also, funny enough, the Ruger American would absolutely not be the rifle I buy if SHTF happened. Empty. This is ridiculous. You know what? I'm going to say it. This is not an abomination. This is a vibe. Again, I would probably want to take it with me because if I'm going to be in a situation where the world ends and I need to hunt to survive, then yeah, I'm probably going to want a hunting rifle. But you'll see here that the Ruger American stats are pretty maxed out in terms of hunting, long range shooting, and ease of use, and it is pretty terrible at everything else. So, so far our two best contenders here for general purpose rifles look to be the Mark 18 and the Spear LT. So let's take a look at my hypothetical Dirty Harry build. Now here's where it gets interesting because the Spear LT and this hypothetical 14.5 build, they both beat each other in exactly four different categories and then they tie in one. So what we're gonna have to do now is I would have to objectively look at this data and figure out what of these do I prioritize more and do I prioritize it enough to build a second rifle that is this similar to the first one. Spoiler alert, I did build it. So this is the Dirty Harry. This has a lot of fun stuff going for it. Uh, we've got the rifle speed gas. I'm not gonna get into it, but I want you to know that my deciding factor between running the Spear LT or building that rifle, it's that I needed a premium AR-15. I love the MCX platform. For the sake of training, I just needed a normal AR-15. But in making a lot of the decisions with what I needed for this build, I used this method with this graph system to help determine what I needed to put together in this build to make it work. All right, guys, so there you go. That's the best way I've found to kind of like war game with yourself and compare hypothetical rifle builds to vet them by what you actually need without your project rifles ballooning into monstrosities that you really do just hate using. Again, I'm not gonna be going into this particular build in this video. We actually have something really special planned to go over that rifle in a video down the road. So just get ready for that one, guys, because it, it is gonna be a fun one. But uh, yeah, that's it, that's the end of the video.